Thank you everyone for sharing those fantastic photos. That was a lot of fun to see. Um, it's a wonderful to have you join us uh, this morning for our third Sunday after Pentecost. Um, a reminder that we invite you to uh, be on mute unless you're speaking. Our readers today are Kim Collins and Don Jackson and the Nash McIsaac family are the responders this morning. Um, Holly uh, is our preacher today, so we're excited to hear her wisdom this morning. We'll begin uh, on page one of the leaflet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Almighty God, source of all that is, giver of every good gift, you create people in your image and call us to love one another as you love us. We confess that we have failed to honor you in the great diversity of the human family. We have desired to live in freedom while building walls between ourselves and others. We have longed to be known and accepted for who we are while making judgments of others based on the color of skin or the shape of features or the varieties of human experience. We have tried to love our neighbors individually while yet benefiting from systems that hold these same neighbors in oppression. Forgive us, holy God. Give us eyes to see you as you are revealed in all people. Strengthen us for the work of reconciliation rooted in love. Restore us in your image to be beloved community, united in our diversity, even as you are one with Christ and the Spirit, holy and undivided Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord is our light and our life. O oh, come, let us worship.
Psalm 86. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. I think Nikki just, we'll, we'll start over again. Nikki just came on, so, so we'll start okay. over again. And maybe I'll do the responses while Nikki is getting connected. So we'll just start over. Oh, and a, a point. Some of the, the bolds are, are messed up. So just we'll do every other and, and it'll all work out. Sorry about that. Excellent. Okay, Psalm 86. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. Keep watch over my life, for I am faithful. Save your servant who puts his trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, and great is your love toward all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the time of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord, nor anything like your works. All nations you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, you do wondrous things, and you alone are God. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed, because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson is from the book of Genesis. The boy grew and was weaned. And on the day of his weaning, Abraham gave a great feast. Sarah saw the son whom Hagar the Egyptian had borne to Abraham, playing with Isaac. And she said to Abraham, drive out this slave girl and her son. I will not have this slave's son sharing the inheritance with my son Isaac. Abraham was very upset because of Ishmael, but God said to him, do not be upset for the boy and her slave girl. Do as Sarah says, because it, because it is through Isaac's line that your name will be perpetuated. I in next morning, Abraham took some food and a full water skin and gave them to Hagar. He set the child on her shoulder and sent her away, and she wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was finished, she thrust thrust the child under a bush, then went and sat down some way off, about a bow shot distant. How can I watch the child die, she said, sat there weeping bitterly. God heard the child crying, and the angel of God called from heaven to Hagar. What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the child crying where you laid him. Go, lift the child and hold him in your arms because I shall make of him a great nation. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a, fel a well full of water. She went to it, filled the water skin and gave the child a drink. God was with the child as he grew up. He lived in the wilderness of Paran and became an archer and his mother got him a wife from Egypt. Here ends the lesson.
The second lesson is from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Shall we persist in sin so that there may be all the more grace? Certainly not. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Have you forgotten that when we were baptized into union with Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death? By that baptism into his death, we were buried with him in order that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, so also we might set out on a new life. For if we have become identified with him in his death, we shall also be identified with him in his resurrection. We know that our old humanity has been crucified with Christ for the destruction of the sinful self so that we may no longer be slaves to sin because death cancels the claims of sin. But if we thus died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing as we do that Christ, once raised from the dead, is never to die again. He is no longer under the dominion of death. When he died, he died to sin once for all. And now that he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, you must regard yourselves as dead to sin and alive to God in union with Christ Jesus. Here ends the lesson. Blessed be the God of Israel who comes to set us free. He visits and redeems us. He grants us liberty. The third lesson is from the Gospel of St. Matthew. No pupil ranks above his teacher, no servant above his master. The pupil should be content to share his teacher's lot, the servant to share his master's. If the master has been called Beelzebul, how much more his household? So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing covered up that will not be uncovered nothing hidden 
that will not be made known. What I say to you in the dark, you must repeat in broad daylight. What you hear whispered, you must shout from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Fear him rather who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet without your father's knowledge, not one of them can fall to the ground. As for you, even the hairs of your head have all been counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than any number of sparrows. Whoever will acknowledge me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. And whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. You must not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to set man against father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man will find his enemies under his own roof. No one is worthy of me who cares more for a father or mother than for me. No one is worthy of me who cares more for son or daughter. No one is worthy of me who does not take up his cross and follow me. Whoever gains his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will gain it. Here ends the lesson. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's gospel lesson in Matthew is one of those passages that initially many preachers, including myself, would prefer to skip right over, to ignore, and focus on the psalm, or maybe the reading from Paul's letter to the Romans instead, which seems a little less harsh. Anything but this passage. But here it is. Here we are. And it would be to our disadvantage to pretend it doesn't exist. So then what is so difficult about this passage? Let's take a look. At first, this lesson from Mass Matthew sounds rather docile, with Jesus teaching his disciples, exhorting them not to be afraid of the dangers that they will encounter as they venture out on their mission to spread the good news that he has taught them. Jesus reassures them that they are of great value to God, so val valuable that even the hairs on their heads have all been counted. If they sacrifice their lives on their mission in the world, God will be with them all the way. Comforting words from Jesus in a way. But then just a few sentences later, we are jarred awake with the following. You must not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. What? A sword? A weapon of war? Does this sound like Jesus? But it gets worse. I've come to set man against father, daughter against mother, and so on, and one's foes will be members of one's old own household. And finally, we're hit with a, a warning that if the disciples choose love for their family members over love for Jesus, they will not be worthy at all. In other words, disciples, you'd better be all in on this mission or you will die without God's favor. Difficult words to swallow indeed. But when we really stop to think about it, any Christian who's been around a while knows that the gospel is often not meant to be easy reading. Jesus' messages are often difficult, and that is exactly what he intended. Jesus was a radical in his time. And as much as he preached about God's unwavering favor and love for all, he also intended to challenge his listeners. If we are to take our faith seriously, and not just in a surface kind of way, we in this day have the responsibility also, as it says in the Book of Common Prayer, to hear, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest scripture, 
particularly the Gospels. As one commentator said about this morning's passage, quote, these texts invite us, or no, they compel us to move beyond soft, saccharine Christianity and wrestle with the hard, high costs of discipleship, end quote. The disciples in the first century were exhorted to face these high costs of discipleship. We too, as present day followers of Jesus, are to do the same. Now you may or may not know that a disciple is someone who learns from his or her teacher. As Jesus explains early in the passage, a disciple is not to be above the teacher, but rather like the teacher. The word disciple comes from the Latin word disciplus, which means student, learner, or follower. Discipleship is actually a journey. Those who set out on a mission of following Jesus are learning as they go. The teacher can teach, but then the student, the disciple, must undertake this journey and learn for him or herself. A disciple of Jesus, says another commentator, is one who first listens closely to the teachings of Jesus and then decides on the appropriate response. She follows up by saying that this requires an obedience that has its eyes wide open as we accept responsibility for the order of the world and engage in transforming it. Discovering with eyes wide open. The more I thought about and prayed over this gospel and these words, the more I could feel the Holy Spirit speaking. This is exactly the gospel reading we need for today in these times. Be a disciple with your eyes wide open. Bravely face the challenges that have been put in front of us by confronting them head on. Be on a journey of learning, discerning, and taking action as a follower of Jesus. Taking on these challenges may indeed draw us away from our families at times, as Jesus warned. There were many, many times in Jesus's ministry when his words did cause family dissension. And this is what he was referring to while teaching his disciples about the realities of living a life that is God-centered as opposed to world-centered. It's hard to hear this, isn't it? Especially on a day in the US when we're celebrating and honoring our fathers. If Jesus were here with us now in person, I believe he would teach us in the same way that he taught his first disciples. He would want for us to have our eyes wide open around the many issues of today, including racism that so sinfully exists in our world if we are truly disciples, we too must view this as a journey that we are on, constantly learning, challenging, and even changing some of our former belief systems to inform our present day of being in the world. I am learning, for example, that as a child of God, my black brothers and sisters are suffering in ways that I had never even imagined that I have intentionally been part of a system that has historically into this present day discriminated against people whose skin is a different color than mine. And it's not enough to say that I am not a racist. I need to be part of that systematic change that has perpetuated the issues that black people in America face every day of their lives. Inequities in healthcare, in treatment by police, in education and job opportunities. I even need to risk angering some of my white friends, relatives, and maybe even some of you by bravely declaring why I think Black Lives Matter instead of All Lives Matter is the appropriate message. I have no doubt that to God, all lives do matter. God counts the hairs on every head. God counts the brown hairs, the black hairs, the blonde, red, and white hairs. But when certain members of God's family are in a more vulnerable position, Jesus himself modeled reaching out 
to the vulnerable, raising them up, loving them, focusing on them, valuing, valuing them, and confronting the situations that caused the problems in the first place, even when he angered people around him for doing so. Today's Gospel in Matthew is all about taking on the challenges that are set before us that prevent God's kingdom from thriving. Jesus says that he will come not to bring peace, but rather a sword. He is speaking metaphorically, of course. A sword is used in battle to defend oneself by slashing the enemy. Perhaps he wants his disciples to use their words and their actions to slash the enemy of peace, which is unrest, hatred, and injustice. Jesus knows that real peace, ironically, is worth fighting for. It's worth sacrificing and dividing fam family members if that's what it takes. We are the ones that must do that work now. We must take up our metaphorical swords and fight any battle that separates us from the love of God, for only then will we achieve peace. Tomorrow night, the Emmanuel Mission Committee will meet and talk about how we can be disciples in the battle of racism. It's a sensitive subject. Chances are we are all in different stages of this journey of learning about the complexities of this issue. Like all disciples, we approach it with different backgrounds, different life experiences, and different ideas about what it all means and how we can respond. We will talk about this and discern this. Please stay tuned for more. We do plan to share our learning and invite anyone who wishes to join this process of study, reflection, and action. Before I conclude, I would like to say a special word to those of you who are fathers or who have or have had fathers. May God bless you and your fathers. Bless you all for the sacred role of fatherhood. It's no easy task to raise a child. It involves so much sacrifice and yes, a journey in itself of learning how to do this the very best way possible. Fathers are not perfect. Many mistakes are made along the way, but most have the best of intentions. May God continue to bless your journey and bless the souls of the fathers who have passed, as we all honor today. Amen. Thank you, Holly. We will continue with the Apostles' Creed. Let us say it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers, and the Nashmic Isaacs are our responders. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Our, our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver, deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant, grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let, Let your, your people, people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. 
for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your saving, let your way be known upon earth. Your let your saving health, oh, your saving health among, among all ages. ages. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor, nor the, the hope, hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you, bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
This morning, we remember those who have asked for our prayers. Arthur, Bruna, Samantha Carter, Gwen Chambers, Cheryl, Kevin Concanon, Jane Dubler, David Fieldhouse, Mark Gallagher, Sydney Gash, Gianna, Kathleen Holland, JC, JD, John, Samantha Nibbs, Colleen Kaneski, George Lloyd, Sandy McGee, Maggie, Pilar and Angel Marta, Jack McTie, Dick Moody, Michael, Ginny Moyer, Vicki Oman, Jim O'Reilly, Lisa Pappas, John Ross, Margaret Skelly, Brian Smith, Fran Sorensen, Roberta Sullivan, Laurel Wexler Dale, Carl Wickstrom, and those you name now silently or aloud. O oh, loving Father, we commend to your gracious keeping all who are near and dear to us. Have mercy upon those who are sick. Comfort all who are in pain, anxiety, or sorrow. Awaken all who are careless about eternal things. Bless those who are young and in health, that they may give the days of their strength unto you. Comfort the aged and infirm, that your peace may rest upon them. Hallow the ties of family, that we may help and not hinder one another in all such good works as you have prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And on this Father's Day, we offer a special prayer for fathers. Almighty God, giver of life and love, bless all fathers. Grant them wisdom and devotion, that each may be to their families strength in need, a counselor in perplexity, a comfort in sorrow, and a companion in joy. And so unite them to your spirit, that they may offer love and peace all the days of their life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray for our world. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, and no strength known but the strength of love, so guide and inspire, we pray, the labors of all who seek to establish righteousness and peace among the nations, that all peoples may find their security, not in force of arms, but in the perfect love that casts out fear and in the fellowship revealed to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And finally, we pray for those who have died. Today, we remember Bernie Hutchins and Gerald Keough, in whose memory donations to our Bread of Life mission are given. And those you name now, silently or aloud, remembering especially those fathers who live in God's deepest embrace. O oh Lord our God, from whom neither life nor death can separate those who trust in your love, and whose love holds in its embrace your children in this world and in the next. So unite us to yourself, that in fellowship with you, we may always be united to our loved ones, whether here or there. Give us courage, constancy, and hope through him who died and was buried and rose again for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The General Thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks 
for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you everyone for joining us this morning for our service. I wanna especially thank Holly for uh, preaching. She noted that a lot of preachers would prefer to pass over this passage, that included me. And so, uh, and so Holly took it on today and I'm most appreciative of that. And it is certainly a challenging one. Um, thank you also to Mike and the choir for the music, for uh, Doug for putting together our slideshows for everyone who contributed Father's Day photos and then at the beginning, and then we had sparrow pictures at the end since Jesus uh, talked about the sparrows in the gospel lesson this morning. Um, uh, you'll, you'll note that we are continue to include um, memorials for Bread of Life. And so if anyone wants to make a donation for Bread of Life, we're happy to receive those particularly uh, memorials um, for those near to you. Um, C. Uh, Gandolfo is happy to stay on and, and host a coffee hour. So thank you, C, for being our virtual usher during the service and then for, for hosting coffee each week. Um, and then finally, uh, Lynn Peterson noted in the chat that there is indeed a lot of lettuce in the community garden at the church. And so you are invited to come and uh, steal some lettuce if you, if you need some uh, for, for home. There is plenty to share for everyone. So we're happy to do that.